I don't think I'll be very far off the mark if I suggest that until now, you have relied on data frames to store most of the useful data that you have processed. Most of the time, our workflow has been to get an input file, most of the time again, in the form of CSV or comma-separated variable files, read them into data frames, and then do further processing. Now, this is perfectly fine if the files you're dealing with are not very large. Real-life data sets can be very, very large, especially these days, and you can easily be processing a data set that has a couple of millions of rows. In such cases, data frames tend to be quite slow. And therefore, people have introduced a modified version of a data frame, and that is called as a tibble. This lesson is about tibbles. To get the ball rolling, let's get hold of a large data set. First, by installing this package called NYC Flights 13. Again, you will install it in the same way that you always install packages. You can use the command in the, the function install.packages, or of course, you can just install it directly from the RStudio packages tab, package tab. Now, when you install this package, this package consists of several data sets, and they're all related, and all of them are connected with all the flights that departed from any one of the three New York airports in the year 2013. Now, of course, once you've installed the package, you load the package by using the library function, library NYC flights 13. And for the time being, we'll deal with one of the data sets in this package, and that data set is called flights. And of course, note the spelling, lowercase flights. This has this is the, the central data set among all the data sets that are in NYC Flights 13. And if you take a quick look at flights, this is what it's going to look like. So if you type flights on your command line, you will see this after installing the package and loading the library, of course. So you see this and notice immediately that the way in which a tibble is displayed is different from how our data frames used to be displayed earlier. So flights is not just a data frame, it's also a tibble. Notice very carefully what I'm saying. So every tibble is also a data frame. A tibble is just an enhanced version of a data frame. So it has almost all the properties of a data frame, but it provides us with certain additional features. But it also does change a few properties of data frames, and we'll get into all of these. So one property of data frame that Tibble changes is how it displays itself. Notice that by default, it displays 10 rows, and it displays as many columns as will fit in your current display window of your console, and it tells you additional information. It says that there are, uh, it says that of course, initially it tells you this is the size of the Tibble, which is 336,776 rows and 19 columns. It gives you that information. It has displayed 10, and therefore, of course, it says 336,766 more rows are there. And it also tells you that there are 13 more columns. So you see some columns. What columns you are not seeing are told, are told to you right below. Okay, so that's one way in which tables differ. Right? So it's just a different kind of data frame. So it doesn't change anything essentially in the sense of how we understand a data frame as a bunch of rows and columns. That fact remains solidly in place. So most of what you could do with data frames, you can do with tables. So there's not a whole lot of relearning that needs to occur just because we are moving from data frames to tables, because after all, tables are data frames. Again, just to emphasize, NYC Flight 13 that's the package. Flights is a table within the package. And as I've already emphasized, this package has several other tables. For the time being, we'll be working with the flights table. As I've been emphasizing, tables are just data frames with additional properties. And therefore, you can operate on tables just like you've been used to operating on data frames. So for example, you can use functions like nrow 
dim. Dim tells you the rows and columns in one command. Now here we used flights dollar year. So the dollar operator, as you already know, allows you to extract the values of a particular column in a data frame or in a table in the form of a vector. And because the result of flights dollar year is a vector, you can look at the length of the vector by using the length function. So none of this, uh, none of these things is really different from what you're already used to. So the fact that flights is a table and not a data, not just a data frame, doesn't really make any difference so far. So you can do flights dollar year is a vector. You can do unique and get the unique values. So from this, we see that this data set contains only data for the year 2013, which we expect because the package was called NYC flights 13. So it's only for one year. And of course, you can get the months. And you can see here the months are 1 to 12. It's not coming out in sorted order because it's just you know, showing it to you in the order in which it saw the data. And you can calculate the mean, flights dollar departure delay. You get an N, NA as a result because, of course, there are some missing values within the data frame. That's informative, useful to know. And you can do the average of the first 100 rows of the departure of the data frame and get the average of those departure delays you can do that so all of this happens to be exactly like what we have done with regular data frames so you can operate on tables just like you've been operating on data frames with one important exception so here i am reading the data from the file toyota.corolla.csv that we have been using for a while Notice that I'm using the function read.csv. And we already know that when we use this function read.csv, what we get is a data frame. So the read.csv function stores its data in a variable which is a data frame and not a table. Okay, and therefore, if you do class tc, that is class of this particular variable, you see that it is a data frame. On the other hand, if you do class flights, and remember, we got the flights data, flights data from the NYC flights 13 package and flights was already a tibble. And of course, when you do that, you see that it says that it's a tibble DF, it's TBL tibble, and then it's also a data frame. So it's got the properties of all of these three types of objects. I'm not going to get into the details of what this means. Uh, this is part of object oriented programming. It's part of class hierarchies and so on. I'm not getting into that. Okay, but understand that flights is both a table and a data frame. Okay, so now I can do TC dollar model. TC is just a data frame. And when I do TC dollar model, I'm going to get a vector. We know this very well. And if I do flights dollar departure delay, again, we're going to get a vector as we've already seen from the prior slide. But now, slight difference starts emerging. So when you do TC comma two, in other words, we are saying, give me all the rows of the second column of this TC data frame. It's purely a data frame. It's not a table. Okay. So from a regular data frame, if you extract one column using the square bracket operator, if you're extracting only one column, it returns a vector and not a data frame. Okay. Of course, when you do the dollar operator, that's exactly what you expect. Now, for a table, okay, on the other hand, for the same data frame, if instead of one column, I get two columns, the result is now a data frame. Okay, so notice I'm using the same operation. Using the square brackets, I'm subsetting it. Here I'm getting only one column, here I'm getting two columns. But the difference is, uh, the result is drastically different. Here I'm getting a vector. Here I'm getting a data frame with two columns. That is very inconsistent and uh, not a great thing. Okay, but if you use a table, so flights is a table, I extract the results of the second column. Although it's only one column, I still get a table containing one column. I do not get back a vector. Okay, that's actually quite a significant and important difference. And if I extract two columns, 
I still get a table this time with the two columns that I asked for. Therefore, in one very important way, tables are a lot more consistent than data frames. And this is going to have a big impact as we go forward in the course and do additional processing.